Hello my beautiful, wonderful people. I'm Ash and welcome back to another monthly Seraph of the End chapter review. This month we have chapter 119. Also, apologies for the late post. Uh, it, it might just be a thing for a little while as I'm still adjusting um, to five day work week and, uh, you know, new country, all that stuff. But anyway, uh, let's get into it because some fun stuff happened this time and we have a nice colored, uh, what do you call it? Color page? Color page, that's what they call it. A nice color page for this chapter. So 119 owl goals. I really like the texture on this one. Like you can, you can really see it easily here. See how it's like brush stroked textured? Like that's a nice brush. I like that. Okay, let's go into it. Ah, yes, so he's climbing to a gear tower. Very cute. I love how this, this panel makes it look like Mika isn't holding onto anything because we can't see his arms. But I guess he doesn't really have to because he can change how corporal his bean is. Like, you know, it makes sense. I love it. <laughs> he's just like climbing. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing there, boy? What are you doing there? How high are you planning to go? What do you think? You think he's going to stop halfway up? Just catch the breeze, you know? <laughs> Fools and smoke to rise in high places. I've definitely heard that before in other anime. So it's actually quite a common Japanese phrase. Or at least they use it in anime a lot. I like though he doesn't even question it. He's like, I guess I'm the fool. Yes, you. You are. But we love you anyway. Don't you worry. Now is not the time to stand out. Yeah, I don't think you cares about that. <laughs> I think it's well established that you just does not give a shit. It's great. I love it. Oh, look at that. That's nice. A little tiny city view. You just, ah, oh, I love this. This is great. <laughs> look at what the scenery. Mika's like, I don't care. Um, I used to be in helicopters all the time. So, you know, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. That's so great. That's so tall. <laughs> you's like, what? You shock face here. What? What's going on there? I love it. <laughs> No, that's common knowledge. Jeez, you didn't you pass year seven mass? Oh my god! Everybody must have liked Tokyo Tower a whole bunch. I I mean, it's a landmark, right? But most of the time, people don't care super much about the landmarks where they live. If you're like from that place or from that country, you usually don't super care about the landmark as much. It's more like, you know, landmarks are, like, tourist destinations. They're for people from other countries to visit. So, like, I don't know. Do Japanese people really care that much about Tokyo Tower? Or do people outside care a lot about Tokyo Tower? That's a, an interesting question. Anyway, he's, uh... Oh, this 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 panel on the left looks really nice. I like the, the, the gentle whoosh of Mika's hair. And Yu's hair just looks... Like, God, I'm sorry, it looks like garbage. I don't mean that from an art perspective. I mean that from a, clearly he has not upkept his hair a lot. And it's just so funny, the fact that Mika always looks so good. And that you you just looks like a drowned rat. And I love it. I love this drowned rat. He, I think he's perfect. Oh, I love the, the, the way that his tail looks. It's like, mm -hmm. one of my favorite things about drawing this demon Mika is like, just kind of like, like doing the squiggle. Working out where to put his tail. It's great. I love it. <laughs> this is so good. They're just like... <laughs> Mika's just like, alright, I'll entertain you. I stand up here at the very top. Doesn't that make me the tallest person ever? Uh... <laughs> Mika's just like, what? <laughs> His brain's trying to do that logic. <laughs> I, I love that. Oh my god. God, just the, the gentlest, like, switch of your center of gravity would absolutely throw you off there. Like, god damn it, you really? You really just did that? You shake your hips like that? <laughs> oh man. I just, I just love how little, like, oh god, poor Mika. He's, he's really been through the ringer for this, hasn't he? <laughs> oh, it's not like the fall will kill him. Neither is a human anymore. He seems so casual in this. He feels very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, detached. He feels very detached here. Like, I feel like he, after you basically ignored what he wanted before he yeeted out of the group, he, like, I feel like Mika is, like, 
kind of like stewing a bit in it and he's kind of just detaching from everything around him including you to some aspect oh look at him would he not still like destroy the ground because like the Im the impact would still like smash the ground even if he his legs could regenerate immediately sort of thing but still i think that could that could have been like a a good chance for a panel where he just like creates a big circle around him. That could have been cool. Anyway. Wow, I'm totally fine. I'm <laughs> sorry, you. You're so funny. <laughs> Mika's just like, ugh. Like, he he jumped too! He, he's, he can just like warp down there. Because that's where his sword is. <laughs> like, <laughs> you didn't have to jump as well, Mika. Oh god, he's so cute. Terminal velocity. Oh, he did. He did go to school, fellas. <laughs> Don't worry, he was paying attention to that. Air resistance stopped me from falling any faster. Yeah, but you still fell pretty fast. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh my god, Mika. I love this. Oh, he really is so detached in this chapter. That's a listen to me look, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you finally noticed? I've looked this way. For, oh, a good 200 years now? Oh, Mika. Whoa, that long? Oh, Mika's just like... Mm -hmm. Can't blame him. You're just dumb then. <laughs> oh, God. Their little their little lover spat they're having here. That's a nice angle of Tokyo Tower, actually. I wonder if they went to Tokyo Tower to... I wonder if they, like, specifically got this photo to, like, uh, trace over the bars for it like do you think they went like surely they did someone for research went and got this angle that'd be kind of fun should really look and see wait everyone everyone who there's no one down there or like basically no one down there and who died in it hmm I, like, I, get, like, I know he's been metaphorical but it's just a bit strange thing to say you I just had to save my family. I just had to save you. Oh, I love the way he's grabbing Mika's hand. Like, Mika isn't, like, returning the the intertwined fingers yet. But, like, you're just, like, grabbing him to, like, ground himself kind of thing. That's really nice. I like that. And there, yeah, there you go. And there, now he's flipped his hand around. Oh. If you're happy, that's all I need. Oh, poor Mika. He looks so pretty in this panel. Oh, the uh, the fluff around his... Not jacket. What is it? Cape. The fluff around his cape is very... Oh, I guess it's fur? Anyway, whatever that shit is, it's very... It, like, contrasts really well with how, like, fair his skin is. Like, it, it's... Well, it's depicted as white here, and then his hair's white, so... Because of how manga is shaded. So, it, it looks very good. The contrast is nice. Your happiness is my happiness. Oh, that's cool. Look, it it looks like it's like little little like stars, little sparkles in the um screen tone the views there. That's really nice. So don't go getting greedy, okay? Oh my god, Mika, do you know who you're talking to? That is Mr. Greed himself. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> what? Let you die and go on living? Uh, even you is not taking this shit today. I love that. That's great. <laughs> Gurun's trustworthy enough. <laughs> Leave this to him. He likes you. Oh, Mika. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, you can really tell he's, like, going through it sort of thing. <laughs> TM. He's going through it. TM. Mm. They begged you not to go. You must have heard that. I heard. Oh. I love when we get these panels of you where you, like, can't see his face where he's just, like, very uh, stoic sort of thing. It's very, it's very nice. What if it was you? Mika doesn't have anyone else. Mika ha didn't have anyone else for four years, you. Like, surely you gotta think about that, man. What would you have done if you were in my shoes? Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, I, th I think Kagami once said that, like, uh, if Mika and you's positions were reversed, they wouldn't have survived. I think I remember him saying something like that in an interview. It's like, if Mika was alone in the human world, he wouldn't have been able to survive. And if you was uh, turned into a vampire, then he probably wouldn't have been able to survive. Because it was like, it's like very specific 
to their personalities that Mika became the vampire and you became the protagonist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I won't give- Yu's just like, mm, I'm not taking this bait. It's delicious bait, but I'm not taking it. I, I just love this little- whoosh, He just pushes him away, like, whoosh, like, gently, you know? I love it. You already turned your back on me and left once. Oh. You abs- Oh, God. You can, like, see what he's doing here. And, like, I know you're smart enough to know that, too. Oh, and Yu's pissed about it. Like, you can tell- like, oh, oh, that, that, that's the game we're playing? Okay, Mika, okay, okay. The gloves are off today. <laughs> as long as you're alive, you could build a new family. This is what Mika's been saying to him the whole time. That, like, you, if you move on from me, your life will, like, you, you, you're able to move on. Sorry, that's what, he's like, you're able to move on because you're strong enough to keep finding new people. Like, when they met in... With Shinjuku, right? When they had the, like, the Shinjuku fight, it was like... He, like, said, yeah, I'm not surprised to see that you have, like, a new family or, like, you found a new family because you've always been that kind of person that, like, people gravitate to him um, because of his personality, which is kind of ironic when you think about how Shikamo Doji is like, yeah, he's just, like, the, the, the body sort of thing. He's just the thing I'm keeping to, to save my son that I actually care about, whereas, like, you has the stronger personality... The actual, like, personality of a king, of, like, the getting people riled up around him and, like, what do you call it? Like, leading people? Even if you isn't the leader of the group, he's still, like, the central crux of it. That, like, everyone kind of circles around or, like, orbits around him. So, like, he definitely has the more royal, like, connections or, like, personality. Whereas, like, Mika is more refined, yes, because he trained under the queen. But, like... You, in terms of, like, what it means to be a king and what, like, a monarch does for its people, you has more of that, I think. Anyway, that was a that was a tangent that just came to my head. Anyway, yes, Mika is getting very angry, but oh boy, those, <laughs> those little fangies, they come out and I'm excited. <laughs> Drop your stupid ex obsession with me already. Oh, Mika, that's not going to happen. <laughs> You're the reason he lives. Come on. We've been through this. Oh, man. You's just like, really? You're trauma dumping? We're trauma dumping each other? Is that what we're doing? Oh, he's trying so you can really tell. Oh, I love that. That that cutaway. So you don't actually see it happen and then you come back. It's like, it makes it makes like a slap it like that more impactful. It's like, oh, like you can just, you can like hear the smack of the slap. And you see this panel. It's like, oh, it's very nice. How do you think I could start a new life if you aren't in it? <laughs> you, please. Oh my god. Just pull the ring out and just ask him already. <laughs> oh god, now they're fighting. I love it. I, I, I love it because it's just so, it's just so them. They, they would do this. This is just like the way they get across to each other. A stupid me. <laughs> I love it. The, 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 uh, the head butt bash again. Like, oh man, that's great. I love it. Oh, it's perfect. Oh. Please just give up. Oh, now he's crying. Oh, Mika. Oh. That's so sad. I love his, like, clenched face. Like, he's like, oh, suffering. Nothing ever goes my way. It, it's my whole life. Nothing's ever worked out. It's so true. It's like, oh man. Mika just, he, he keeps trying even though everything goes wrong for him. Like, he's had so many things go wrong in his life. And there have been, like, horrible, horrible things going wrong. But then, like, he keeps trying. Like, he's still here. And he keeps trying to do what he, think is ri he thinks is right. English. <laughs> what he thinks is right. But, like, uh, everything keeps going wrong. But, he, like, he doesn't, he doesn't give up. Even though, he, like, he said he has. He, he still is trying to do what he thinks is right. And I just, I really admire that about his character. Because it's just, honestly, this poor kid. I can feel how strongly you don't want to give up. Oh, so cute. I love it. Oh. <laughs> ah, I just, I love it. They're just, neither of them is going to budge. And it's like, ah, come on, I love it. Oh live anyway oh my god 
I just have a compliment for that. Fucking compliment me, Mika. Sticks his leg up in the air, compliment me. Telling me I was a good boy. Oh, man. Oh, you. Classic you. Are you gonna tell me to abandon you again? Yeah, like... I, like, I can't blame the fact that that was, like, the trigger. Like, basically, Mika saying exactly what you feared the most. Like, for him to say. That it, it like, oh, man. Ah, it's like if you um was like, yeah, but you're the one who killed all of our family. Like, that, like you know, Mika's greatest fear. Um, like, oh, man. Ugh, it's just deep. It's intense. I love that they just had a, a goddamn fisticuff fight. In front of the Tokyo Tower. <laughs> Sacrifice the world to bring me back to life. Please. 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 Everyone else is already dead. Their souls have moved on. Blah, blah, blah. All of that drama crap. It, it, let's, let's start again. Mika's more important. He, he's an emotional support demon. You needs his emotional support demon. Idiot. You're supposed to be the smart one. Use your brain. We haven't thought for ourselves one bit. Yeah, he's he's like right here. They're like it's it's constantly a struggle between like what Gurren offers them is, oh you go you have to go with me because I'm the lesser of two evils, because Shikamaduji's plan is worse. Like everyone's dying. Wow, crap. Uh, but Gurren's is like oh only the vampires die, but we bring everyone back. Um, he's failed to mention the fact that is this gonna be like the last time and they're only gonna get two years. Oh, no, it's not two years, sorry. What was it? It was ten years? Ten- it, yeah, it's ten years. His friends only have two years left, yeah. So, is everyone gonna come back for ten years and we think that's gonna be dandy? Are you all just supposed to, like, birth ten billion children that are supposed to carry on? Like, you're gonna have a bunch of ten-year-olds left and, like, younger than ten, like, max ten-year-olds. If you get busy right away. <laughs> you're, you're, like, you're not gonna have a society again. You're gonna have a bunch of children. Like, I- I just- I- I don't think- uh, like, there's no confirmation that that's going to happen again. Like, maybe the sacrificing all of the vampires makes it better and everyone comes back so they can continue their life normally. Whatever. But, like, Gorin hasn't said that. And he hasn't said that because I don't think he knows. Or if he knows, he's wisely shutting up about it. Because the smarter people in the group, like um, Kamizuki and Yoichi, would probably start questioning it. Or it's like, oh, it's only 10 years? Is that really worth it? Like, mm, like clearly they would still probably pick their family because they would want 10 years back with Tomoe and um, Mirai and anyone else. I can't remember who else was down there. But, like, I still think that they would be smart enough to question it because Kamizuki has a brain. Um, and Yoichi also tends to think for himself a bit more. So... I feel like Gurren might just be avoiding that. I'm tangenting, but the the main fact, the main point is that Gurren is the lesser of two evils. So you is right here in saying that they haven't thought for themselves because every time Mika has tried to express an opinion, Gurren has shut him down. Um, to basically be like, oh, so you're, you're gonna go with the first instead, and then he's like turned to use group and you know be like, oh, uh, so you're gonna betray them all. Um. You gotta betray humanity, and like, so he hasn't given like you and Mika time to think, especially alone, because they haven't been alone, which I think is important too. Because if Gurren's there, he can micromanage what they're thinking and saying. So this is kind of crucial in that I think they have a chance here to actually, you know, do some stuff, especially if the gang shows up after this and Gurren's like slower or behind them, so that um. The Shinoa squad has time to actually talk to them and like talk themselves out instead of having like one panel every chapter sort of thing. Anyway, yeah, Gurren, he's making choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's making choices for what he think is right and the first is doing the same. So I think he's right in saying that, um, that yeah, they should, they should just talk it out. We haven't thought about anything. I like that we use just like no 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 no. We're gonna we're gonna play our own game here. Yeah, I'm gonna put the checker on the chessboard. <laughs> That's such a you thing to do. <laughs> Who do we betray? <laughs> I, I I just <laughs> get in, kids. It's a betraying time. <laughs> I just <laughs> I just love that image. <laughs> Sorry, it just it just 
it makes me laugh, like, imagining them just being like, you just being like, all right, come on, Mika, tell me who are we going to betray? Come on, come on. <laughs> That's so good. Before he said you had a plan, what was it? I don't have a plan. <laughs> oh, my God. That, the way he answered this was so Gurren-like. Like, how Gurren is an early manga where, like, Shinora would be like, oh, remember when you said this? And Gurren would be like, what? Hell no, I didn't say that. Piss off. <laughs> like, that was just such a Gurren thing to say. Kind of funny, but interesting. Mika just being like, oh god, again, suffering.jpg. We're still stuck in those days, Mika. Yeah, you are stuck in the past. It's about time you realized. Oh, we're still trapped and helpless, just like we were when the vampires had us. Yes, very dramatic. Yeah, I mean, you're... you're He's not wrong. You did come up with a crazy plan. Granted, most of it wasn't your plan so much as it was as it was Farid's plan. But regardless, you still thought about it when you were twelve, fucking twelve years old. When most twelve year olds wouldn't be smart enough to do that. Mika is a really smart character. I think he just hasn't had the time to, re especially recently, he hasn't had the time to do anything. Like he thought about the implications of you still fighting Gurren back when he sacrificed himself as a vampire. And he made that decision because to him it's like, oh, I can think up an idea, but most of the time it involves me sacrificing myself or me hurting myself somehow because he doesn't have self-worth. So, like, it's no matter to him that he, like, dies or anything like that. So the idea of going along with Gurren because humanity comes back, you get a better life, where he doesn't have to fight vampires at the cost of Mika's life, that's like a win-win. Mika sees nothing wrong with that. So, like... I think it's definitely, like, he could definitely come up with something that would work. And I think if any character could come up with something to beat Shikama Doji and Gurren's plans, it would be Mika. Because he's just, he's smart. He just hasn't had a chance recently to really be able to do things for himself. Because he doesn't care enough about himself to commit to that. But now that, like, you was, like, telling him about it, like, you're smart, I know that better than anyone. Yeah, you can come up with the plan. And he's right. So your plan was to dump it all in my lap. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's so funny. It's great. Yeah, you're the brains and the brawn. <laughs> that's great. I love that. Oh. I've got bigger ideas than Gurren. <laughs> Even the first. Yeah, I got the biggest ideas. Why didn't he say my ideas are as big as the Tokyo Tower? You! <laughs> it's right there for comparison. <laughs> oh, wasted opportunity. Bring everybody back. Uh, and there's the idiot. <laughs> I love that. The girl nor the first can pull that off, but you think you can? Absolutely. Yes, because I'm dumb. Oh my god. He's not wrong. Like, you is not weighed down by th things like the first and uh, Gurren are. Like, Shikama and Gurren are very weighed down by past events, their own history, their own mistakes, blah blah blah, shit like that. But to you, it's, like, less important because he's kind of stopped living in the past and he's more mo moving on to the future. And it's because of Mika being there by his side that he's been able to do that. So, like, Mika's presence has already, like, basically become the answer to this problem. It's like, you really can't stop you at some point. Like, that's how it's going to go down. <laughs> do I really have to do this? <laughs> oh, poor Mika. Oh god, they're so cute. I love the way his tail curls even here. That's such a good, just mm, oh, important detail we need. <laughs> oh man. If anybody could do it, it, could, it would be Mika. He want me to think up how. <laughs> oh. And if it doesn't work, we'll both just die. Oh my god. Jesus Christ the same goal we decided on the way back then ah i love that he's like you know what if your plan doesn't involve both of us surviving then i w i won't survive and that's what you want the most so he's really backed mika into a corner but it's like a corner i think mika can work from definitely or the page is taking like forever to load i just real. i just really feel like yeah, Mika could come up with something. As to what that thing is, I don't actually know. I personally would have no idea how Mika would come up with something. This is cute. I like this. Where he's like, oh, we all survive. And then, like, 
I'm assuming Mika's imagining this of like, oh, I'm sorry, look at, look at their little faces. Oh, Kid Mika and you makes me so sad. They're just so cute and happy and full of life. Oh, memories. It's great. Oh, and he agrees to it. That's so good. That's so good. Oh, man. I, I'm really excited to see what happens. Like, I feel like it's going to be like one of those moments where it's like in the heat of battle or the heat of something going on. Like, Mika's just going to make the connection to something. And I'm like, oh, I want to know what that is. It's like, I haven't really thought about it that much because it's always been Gurren's shitty plan or Shikama's shitty plan. What's going to happen? But like... To be completely fair, like, maybe there's a circumstance where if you're reviving an angel, like Mika, like, how powerful is he gonna be? Because if you revive Mika, can he not just revive humanity in its stead somehow? Like, I guess it depends, because Shikama can't do it right now, obviously, or he would. But, like, I'm just, I'm just, like, wondering, like, what it would, what it would be, and, like, how they're gonna do it. But I just, oh man, I wanna... I want to know. I want to know. But it's like, it's exciting now that they've, they've got their game plan on. They're fist bumped. It's happening, lads. It's happening. So yeah, no idea what the next chapter will be about. I'm assuming we're going to change point of view because I was so sure Shikama was going to show up in this chapter, which, you know, I'm not, I don't have a great track record of predicting how Kagami paces his plot versus how I would pace a plot. But like, I think next chapter, it feels like we're going to have a point of view shift because... Uh, this is like a nice, neatly wrapped bow sort of thing, this chapter. So now we move on to progress the plot of other characters. Maybe, maybe Shinya and Kurito will wake up finally. <laughs> Who knows? But this is a good chance to like look in on other characters and see how the rest of the plot is unfolding because it's not, it can't all just be about you and Mika if there's no, uh, there's no Cataclysm working against them now. So... We'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's it from me. So thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to leave your thoughts below. What do you think about the chapter and everything? All that jazz. And I'll see you next month. Until then, take care of yourselves. See ya.